Hi everybody and welcome back to Markonomics 101 Presents Hoot Loot, the place you come to be informed, be amused, but never be misled like uh, the Fed governors right here by my side. They, um, they see no evil, they say no evil, but they see no inflation either, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today. That's the name of the, the today's uh, show, as a matter of fact. The Fed sees no evil, says no evil, uh, sees no inflation, and we're going to talk all about that and why that is today and how you know the market still remains on a bit of a uh, teeter-totter. So um, what we'd also like to mention again is our promotion that we're having. Uh, precious metals, even though they're not having a good day today, I can tell you that, a weird day. We'll talk about that in a minute, but the, the king of precious metals, Bill Murphy, has graciously uh, you know, allowed us to uh, offer La Metropole Cafe, uh, which has a free trial, and uh, Gata.org, which is also free to, uh, you know, to any subscribers, anybody who wants to just try it. I mean, he's done it uh, just for anybody. Why don't you guys uh, take a look at it if you like it. Uh, we're going to have a drawing in a few weeks, and the winner is, uh, is going to get one on the house. So uh, check those out, and we have a couple interviews with them a few shows back. So, in any event, if um, you would all like to uh, like and subscribe, please do right here. And we're going to be right back with the charts. Woo! All right, welcome back, everybody. I know how jealous you must all be because I have a hoot coin t shirt on, which is really cool. Before we get onto the charts, I want to show you some really nifty stuff here. Hoot coin right here for you, right here, the real thing, hoot coin right there. Look at how gorgeous that thing is, and believe it or not, our artist Gaby Kate Tevsich made a special hoot buckle in case uh, for all you cowboy hoot fans out there. Now we also have this uh, hoot keychain, which as you know can be used for you know, a little bit of that, but we're not going to talk about it. Let's go out of the chat. Okay, so uh, everybody's talking about Bitcoin and... <laughs> Well, I guess I, I kind of know why you'd be talking about it. I don't know what they're talking about since they don't know what it is exactly. But in any event, Bitcoin has had a bit of a rally, and the, the rally has occurred on the, on the tales of uh, El Salvador uh, declaring it legal tender. I mentioned last week that legal tender is a really good status for something. It, it really gives it a, a possibility, or a, it, it gives it sort of um, a legitimacy that the U.S. <laughs> I think probably needs uh, before they release the uh, the news that it's you know, made in the U.S.A. Born in the U.S.A. Anyway, um, <clears throat> Bitcoin, which is a uh, password uh, for any of you who want to know exactly, one Bitcoin equals one password. There you go. Uh, 30, 39,000 last I checked for one password. Okay. So in any event, uh, these are kind of two resistance and support lines on Bitcoin that I've drawn. Uh, 30,000 being the uh, support. I think it's going to, it's more likely to break that. It could go up. It might not. I don't know. It's, you know, all the, um, the cryptos look like that. And I think people are starting to ask questions like, who designed this again? Who's running this again? Uh, where did this come from again? Yeah, you know, those kind of questions that we talked about on Bitcoin Bites Back. Uh, you know, why don't you check it out? Because if you're not asking those questions or you can't come up with answers to those, and I sure can't, then you know something ain't exactly what it appears to be. Uh, the other canary in the coal mine is called Tesla. And you all know who this is, uh, <laughs> Mr. Elon Musk. And um, the reason that I put Tesla up here is that even though today we're not going to go through the mega, 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 mega caps, but we are going to uh, do something that, um, you know, t Tesla looks like it might be bottoming here. So you got to watch out because, you know, I, I know I'm supposed to eat crow on this show. I'll talk about it in a second. And I will eat crow because we're going to, I told you I would. I, the thing is, you can't own crow in this part of the, the territory. So we're going to have to figure out another way of how to do that. But next Saturday's show will be the Marco Eats Crow Show. Okay? Enough said. And it's all because I'll send us checks. All right, so let's go on to the regular stuff. This is Dow, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Again, it, it almost looks like it broke down today, which is kind of interesting because, um, you know, we had the, the, another one of those Fed meetings today where they just kind of like, you know, they sit around and they yap, 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 yap. Nothing happens. Nothing gets done. The market is totally upset unless nothing gets done, which is always nothing gets done. They can't do anything because nothing gets done because, God forbid, they should be surprised. So, you know, the market is like training them you know, not to do anything ever without their permission. 
which I find just very funny because the market has trained the Fed very well. Uh, at this point, the market has the Fed very well trained. Wouldn't you say? Not, well, I would anyway. So uh, let's go on. The NASDAQ 100, Here's this is the one I said I'd eat crow about. You know, ding, ding, nobody rings the top of the bell. Oh, okay. All right, all right. So it made a, it barely made a new high. It did turn down. The stocks are still looking pretty good. There, there might be an, another new high, another leg up in this thing. But anyway, we will have a, a crow-eating extravaganza next week. Okay, next Saturday. Something for you to look forward to and set your clocks to. It's going to be so neat. Sort of. Okay. Um, Dow Jones Transportation, in case anybody needs to get around. Uh, this may be a consolidation flag, or it may be something else. We'll just have to see. We don't have enough data points. Interesting, though, transportations are starting to turn down. It's kind of funny because, in some ways, this may be a 180-degree economy. I don't know, but there's evidence that the economy just burst up like, like one of uh, Elon Musk's rockets and came back down to Earth in a blaze. I don't know. I think that's what might be going on. We'll see. Uh, U.S. dollar index. Out of all things, for this thing to rally, I mean, look at that. Just, I <laughs> just don't get it. Well, you know, it is the dollar index, and the dollar index means it's a dollar against the euro, and a little bit of the pound, and a little bit of the yen, and all that. So it's mostly against the euro anyway, and the dollar is a crummy currency, but so is the euro, and so is the pound, and so is, well, the yen's not that bad, but still. You know, it's, it's like paper gets other paper gets other paper. <clears throat> so it's not, that's how useful it is. Uh, Commodities continue to kind of walk their way up. Uh, there's always news every day of something else that's in short supply. Uh, it's not transitory. I love the term transitory. The Fed who speak with a fork and tongue, as my Native American friends would say. Um, it, transitory means temporary. No, you throw a bunch of money, it kind of filters. The temporary part is the high part. You know, the, the not temporary part is the getting off the money, you know, addiction part. So anyway, the commodities, crude oil is just marching all the way up higher, all the way to 70 bucks. People are telling me there's traffic all over the place. Well, I don't know. Sold my car. Don't really, don't really know. Thank God for that. Um, copper miners. Now this is interesting. A couple of the metals are starting to break down. And so we are getting some feeling here. There's some feeling that there's some recession or deflation or something coming on here. Now I wouldn't get all vexed about this because it has gone up like eight times. So it's coming down a little bit. It's bound to. But on the other hand, you know, it's a fairly sizable drop, so it's something worth keeping an eye on. And same with lumber. I mean, look at lumber. We were talking about this thing going straight up, and now all of a sudden it's come straight down. And that's what happens, especially when people start hoarding and making inventory profits and hoarding, thinking it's going to go up, kind of like Bitcoin, for example. You keep hoarding it and hoarding it and hoarding it. Well, you know, someday it stops going up, and then all of a sudden you've hoarded something that's that's falling in value. So we'll see. You know, it's kind of the greater fool thing. Where is one where you need one? Never when I need one except in the mirror. Okay, Dow Jones. These are the um, REITs, or Real Estate Investment Trusts. This is uh, basically just kind of a little picture of where real estate is going. People are talking about it being in a bubble. Uh-uh, not in a bubble, folks. It is actually going up because the dollar is becoming less valuable, and there's a lot more of them, and interest rates are too low, and blah, 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 blah. There's going to be a lot of excess real estate on the market in a while, but not right now. Now, now, now all they're talking about is just shoveling money at you every single day. Except me, of course, because I never get anything from them. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Om, om, om. Okay. All right. Good. We're good now. All right. Now, let's go on to the agriculture fund. Uh, notice also in this, this case, here's another situation where you're getting, uh, you know, the, the narrative, the bullish narrative is, or the Fed narrative is, this is just temporary, transitory. It'll work its way through the system. The bottlenecks, blah, 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 blah. Uh, this is one of those things that they cite. They cite things like, well, you know, food prices have stopped going up like crazy, like 10% a day compounded interest. So, you know, everything that goes up goes down. The trend is still up. There's no reason to believe that this thing is going to be on any kind of downward trend. So, yeah, it is having a little bit of a correction here. But as long as you print more money, you don't make more food, and you don't have more people to eat more food, there's no reason to think that they're going to go down. Remember, anything of, uh, of limited supply, okay, is going to go up in value against anything of unlimited dollars. 
It's just as simple as that. If they're unlimited, then whatever you have in limited supply has to go up in value against those dollars, period. Uh, base metals, uh, these are also coming in. These have been the strongest. Uh, these are the ones like you know nickel and zinc and lead and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they're still doing pretty well, we'll see. Uh, you know, these are probably among the strongest of the of the uh, commodities right now. Uh, platinum, it's kind of leveled itself out. It was uh, rallying quite a well before. This was palladium, now flat. Uh, Five-year treasury yields. Now, here's the interesting thing. Today, five-year treasury yields on uh, the Fed meeting, okay, the Fed meeting and then the Fed, you know, conference are nothing. This is basically where they say, yeah, you know, we think inflation is tame and temporary and the GDP will grow by 7% this year and blah, 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 and everything is just wonderful. That's basically, you know, what the Fed meeting today is all about. So five-year treasuries, though, uh, rallied like crazy. I'm a little surprised by this, but uh, we'll see what happens. It didn't quite extend on to the 10 years as much. And as a matter of fact, you know, they're about halfway. So it actually did extend to the 10 years. And here's the interesting thing. The 30 years, just a little bit, not as much, but they did. They, they were way down earlier. Um, the uh, tips, though, these are the Treasury Inflation Protected Securities. Look at that last day. I didn't, I just, <laughs> look at that last day. I didn't even see this until, you know, a few minutes before we went on the air. And if you look at this, a huge outside day down. And w what does this say? I mean, when tips go up, then uh, inflation is expected to go up. When tips go down, you know, con conversely is true also. So you had a huge shift in expe inflation expectations today, apparently, according to this. I don't know. I'm really, I'm very much at a wonder about that, but we'll see. Um, you know, gold, this one also, the, you know, it is not done well now. It was doing very strongly before. It's not done well now, but Bitcoin is not doing well now. So Bitcoin is not the reason. I'm not quite sure what's going on in here, but it's right around its 50% mark. And uh, after the close today, the futures market, it was just getting blasted. So, I mean, again, these deflationary th signs are like, what? I just don't know. I, I mean, that's why I keep telling you, don't get, you know, don't get involved. Um, Silver, too, has been hanging in there. I mean, they're not getting blasted. Gold was getting blasted a little bit. But, I mean, silver still looks like it's doing pretty well here. Uh, it didn't get blasted, but it's down a little bit in the, um, you know, aftermarkets. Bank index is starting to curl over also, you've noticed. But, you know, it, it's not looking too bad. It's still at a support area. Banks, you know, banks, are, you know, no matter what happens with interest rates here, uh, and, and all that, I think banks are, are going to do just fine, <laughs> you know. I mean, they're all buds with the Fed anyway, so what the hell, you know, they're all going to do fine. Uh, Broker-dealer, and I say with the broker-dealers, by the way. Um, you know, again, just kind of curling up toward its uh, apex of its ascending wedge. If it ever gets there, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, JP Morgan is a, kind of a bellwether for the uh, financial sector, and you notice it's it has curled over. It looks like it has uh, uh, peaked a bit, <clears throat> so we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, Citicorp, <clears throat> I put this in here because we haven't put it put in Citicorp very much, but look at how much it, it, how well it's done and how much it just broke all of a sudden, you know. And that's kind of a weird sign that uh, in the last couple of days there's been uh, you know a PPI report and there's been a, a Fed meeting that all of a sudden we've had these weird breaks in the in the banks here, two of them at least. The airline index also uh, I think is kind of holding up okay. Trans remember, transportations are not doing too well. That's why we put it in there. Alaska Air is in around the top. Uh, Delta Airlines also in around the top. <laughs> These are not good formations here. JetBlue in around the top, but also broke down. So you got you know a bunch of the bigger airlines that have broken down here. FedEx, which we we you know we have it on almost every time for a reason. This thing is the one that carts goods around. Well, they had broken up. And that's one of the reasons we thought the economy may be getting stronger here, because it looked all of a sudden it was rolling over. Now all of a sudden it's breaking down. So again, this is one to watch, and this is you know this is why I'm so confused. You know, here I'll I'll, I'll give you the benefit of the wisdom of uh, one of these guys here. Let me see. W what do you think of the market? You're an ugly idiot. Yeah, thanks. Well, you're just jealous. You don't have one of these, right? These who coins? Okay. So FedEx, uh, kind of neutral-ish, uh, don't know what to think of that. This is uh, UPS, also called PS, uh, just in case you didn't know. We, we've shortened it to PS instead of UPS. That's my way of just saying UPS, you know. Only my homies, hey, did you see the PS truck? You know, that kind of thing. Um, in any event, this thing also looks like it's kind of 
rolled over and given it how central it is to logistics and all that uh, that's just very very surprising so got to keep an eye on that and and again it kind of makes me wonder whether we have like an a top to the economy you almost never have those I mean you have the bottoms but you never have a top so we'll see um, uh, caterpillar tractor also was very healthy until about two days ago very healthy look at that completely broken down they're supposed to get all this uh, infrastructure funding um, and uh, Dow Holdings here's another one that's kind of come down still above his trend line though and then uh, you know uh, we have 3M and that's also now starting to look like it's curled over even though it was like it looked like nothing could stop it so uh, big oil how could they be any happier than seeing inflation and prices go up and their inventory in the ground has now gone up in value so much? Imagine how much Exxon is worth more today than it was worth, say, I don't know, you know, last year at this time. Last year at this time, Exxon was probably worth, I don't know, maybe $90 billion. Today it's probably worth $700 billion just in asset value in the ground. So, you know, I'm sure they're pretty happy about that. Um, Big Pharma is never unhappy because they're always going up no matter what, whether we're too healthy and we need more of their, their drugs because we're too healthy or we're unhealthy, therefore we need more of their drugs. Either way, we need more of their drugs. And so they're always healthy. That's what keeps them healthy. Our health, our need of drugs keeps Big Pharma healthy. You ever thought about it that way? I haven't. Okay, Costco. Um, you know, th this one also just like came you know, broke down, came roaring back, looked like there was going to be some kind of, uh, you know, a surge, you know, this stimulus, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that, stimulus check surge. I didn't get my stimulus check. That's why I was still a little irked about it, but it's okay. Costco uh, broke down. So, you know, again, this is a sign that maybe we have an A top, you know, instead of a V bottom, maybe we had a V bottom and an A top. I don't know, but it's kind of looking that way. CVS2, look, look at that surge. All of a sudden, just a surge. And then a top, you know. So again, and I brought a number of these like Nordstroms surge, and then it's kind of curling over and a rounded top. So I don't know. Target, this one looks pretty healthy to me, but um, you know who knows? I mean, the other ones are you know are mostly surging and they're, they're looking like they're coming to a top. So anyway, uh, thank you very much for tuning in today. I wanted to say that um, just uh, uh, mention again the special promotions that we have coming up is that one is that we're going to start, uh, for new subscribers, we're going to start having giveaways for some of these incredible gifts. I don't know if you have a girlfriend like my... Well, <laughs> never mind about that. But uh, in any event, uh, uh, we're going to have those, and we're going to have some of these lovely hoot clothes so that you, when you guys are hooting around, you say, hey, life's a hoot, you'll have this on. But uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe down there. Uh, remember, we do have a special promotion for precious metals, the king of precious metals, Bill Murphy's La Metropole Cafe and Gata.org. All right. See you next time. And yes, I will eat crow next, next time somehow legally.